They're saying out here, uh, we're all covered with snow right now. Oh, but there's times we have the hickory logs out here. There's some logs and wood underneath the snow there. And the wood is split. It's split in pieces lengthwise. We use an ax and a club. The log is split. Now one guy uses the ax, the other guy uses the club. The ax is put on a tree, pounded in with a big club. That's how you split the tree into pieces. Each tree is cut, well split into eight pieces. Looks like this is already cut. This is the bottom of the tree where you make the shape, the trapezoid shape. This is where it's going to bend. It's the bottom of the tree. You don't do the top. So you dry it for two months and then it's put in the steamer out there. Once it's steamed, that piece is put into this bender from that side. It's bent all the way around. And it looks like this on there. We bent all the way around, pull the wire up, secure the wire, and you pull it right off. This piece sits drying for at least six more months, sometimes longer. You can see the bend here that sets the uh, shape. It's put in this holder, like this, that holds the bend. After that sets, it's taken out, the wire's taken off. It's cut here, a little smaller. The handle is cut with the grain, so you don't cut it straight. You follow the grain, so you got a good handle, oversize. Again, back to the steamer, straighten the handle. Cut the end off, cut to length, and then I, I sign it, I date it, I put the uh, Onondaga Nation on there, then I put in the nylon cord on the side, the four leather thongs down the middle. I, I put the gut wall on, the rawhide wall. When that dries, I put the webbing on with the throwing string. There's a lacoste. That's 10 months of work right there. These old-fashioned sticks that I make, uh, reproductions, about 1890, it's a replica that I make, like a stick maker would make a stick in 1890. And I make original style balls, like a leather ball like this, for the stick. <laughs> you can actually uh, use this, play catch and throw, yeah. It works, it's a lacrosse stick, it works. And so this is 1890. And this one, I just finished this yesterday actually. This is, this, this style is about 1830 when George Beers from Montreal started the lacrosse up there. It's the kind of stick and ball that they were using. So, of course the game was played a little different <laughs> with this kind of stick and this kind of ball. Uh, there's a big development in the whole game from once it started to today. This style of stick developed into all the lacrosse in the world today. They play in England and Japan and uh, Hong Kong and Uganda even, you know. But it all started with this type of stick and this type of ball. Iroquois style. Because. The game is special. It's not just a game. It's not just a bat. <laughs> it's not just a hockey stick. It's special, and that's what this reflects. How special the game is, how much it means to me. That's why I made a stick like this.
Well, the Oneida, I believe the name Oneida is a derivation of Oneataag, which is the people of the Standing Stone. And the people of the Standing Stone originated in the area of New York centuries and centuries ago, probably several thousand years ago. Uh, one of the original five nations of the Iroquois Confederacy. So the five nations would be Mohawk, or the older brothers, Oneida, the younger brothers, Onondaga, Cayuga, and then the Seneca. So those are the original five nations. Lacrosse was a very popular game in the East, but it wasn't a popular thing here in Wisconsin. The lacrosse sticks had a large uh, basket, uh, not like some others, which I saw from the Cherokee. I went to Cherokees down in Tel Telequa and they were playing, and they had a little aperture and a small ball and there would be 200 people playing on the field and they had to take that little ball and hit that post over there for a score. That this was called and is called the creator's game. So it was a matter of sides with different opinions who would settle a question by playing the game. In regards to the uh, uh, lacrosse, um, so it, in our understanding and in our story, you know, it goes back to the time uh, of creation. And during that time, uh, after the two brothers, we say there were two brothers, there was twins, and one of those to play uh, the game of lacrosse. So it was then, the two of them played, but they were evenly matched. And so by the time the sun was setting, they were both tied. The score was equal to each other. And so no one actually won. This is our understanding of how the origins of the lacrosse game came to being. And so they were to, you know, get this particular kind of wood, which is the hickory, they used for the lacrosse sticks. This is a strong wood. And why? Why the hickory is because it tempers each person, hardens their spirit more, much more, and um, for them to play this game. So if there was ever um, some kind of a dispute of maybe land, so they would have a game in regards to whoever wins his games, then this will determine. From the time of our, uh, our kids, we were trying to um, rekindle, I guess, that fire, the game of lacrosse, um, help rekindle that whole uh, aspect of playing lacrosse. This is something that uh, they have roots to, you know, our kids. And so it, it kind of started out slowly. It eventually evolved and have helped to mold our kids doing that integrating, you know, this part of our, what is our roots of the game, you know, and, and it's flourishing, you know, we see it, you know, we see our kids, you know, they're starting to really take hold of it again. I was learning for a couple of years and I always played catch with my dad in the backyard. I just love playing lacrosse. So for me, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a sport, you know, um, Haudenosaunee people and, uh, only to Aga, Oneida people, you know, we've had it since the beginning of our time. So I think of where it comes from and how those teachings have been passed on. As you know, and it's a very unique sport. It's not even saying it's a sport, it's, 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 a, it's a way of life. Oneida at that time was still in the process of learning who we were. So lacrosse came back a little later. I mean, there were people who played it, there were people who had sticks, and there was still, it was still there. And so it's been a legacy in that way. And 
It represents our people. Sometimes we don't care what the score is. All we care is about that we have fun and we play for the creator. This game's in their blood, you know, and it'll never go away. It's always has been and always will be part of who we are. I think what's special about lacrosse and what makes it exciting is it's referred to as the fastest game. The game of lacrosse, there's over a thousand ways to do one thing. It's very fun to see people coming together with different talents, working towards a common goal. When I first heard the term medicine game, I heard it was a medicine game not only for those playing it, that it's for a good body, a, a good mind, and a good heart by running around and playing, but it's also a good medicine for anyone that watches the game. When you see people moving the ball around and making goals and big hits, it's very exciting. So it's medicine not only for the players, but also for the people that watch. So your game is you're not playing just for yourselves, but you're playing for the community and for the good medicine to lift the people's spirits up. My great uncle Leonard gave me a lacrosse stick uh, made by the Mohawks. And from the minute I first held the stick, it just felt like a connection to my ancestors, to my past. When I use them, I think about my relatives who are no longer with us. Every time I go after a ball, it seems to give me renewed energy. Uh, in the summer of 2015, I had the wonderful opportunity of trying out for the Iroquois indoor lacrosse team. And out of those people, I was uh, the only one using a, a wooden lacrosse stick. It gave me a lot of energy when I was out there. I, and I did not I'm not the best lacrosse player, and I, I, did, I did not make the Iroquois National Indoor Lacrosse Team in 2015, but I'm very proud of my efforts, and I'm, I'm proud of using a wooden lacrosse stick. I have always wanted to share it with other people, for other people to experience the same joy, the same excitement that I've gotten from this game. I don't think it matters so much people's ancestry or their gender when I teach them the game. I say, as long as you have a heart, and as long as you have a spirit, you can learn the game. The roots of the class, I think of the, the first Native Americans that, uh, that played it, and um, I think it's like honoring them to get the, I guess the identity uh, back. Uh, Native American and I wanted to start playing it, getting back to whatever my roots is. As a Navajo and Hopi, we're a runner, they're running, so for me, I just wanted to play. The roots of lacrosse, I think, is or have being able to reclaim Native culture, and so it's a Native game to begin with, and being able to bring it back to the Native population who have you know, lost that knowledge of how to play and the ancestors behind it and the whole story to how lacrosse began. I think that's the root. That it is referred to as a medicine game. You know, just that, that connection to the people to whom it was given, who use it as a medicine, you know, who, who view it as sacred. 
it's just so inspirational. Every time I play a game or I practice, that I feel like it's, it's just me. It's truly what I am. Without playing this game, I wouldn't have energy like this. So I just love this game and it just gives me so much power and energy. My name is Cynthia Garcia. Um, I am, my travel nation is uh, the Tona Akam. I feel better when I play lacrosse. It gets my anger out. It um, helps me get, gets me out there, be athletic. Feels different because this is wood. I'm playing like when my ancestors were playing. Pull across, it's fun. It's a Native American sport, and I wish it, it never released. You know, this game's been going on for centuries. Um, from, from the northeast of the United States and like and um, uh, Canada area. And then later on, even you jump forward a little bit, recently I found out that, that it, there was also some forms of stick game in BC, the British Columbia area, all on the other side. You know, that's a, that's a big distance. So obviously the main version of lacrosse we play now is, is up from like the Six Nations area, but lacrosse was from everywhere. Lacrosse is like, like not like any other sport. When you go out there and play, you, you play for the creator and you play for the love of the game and, and we play to share the game. I want him to pass on to, to, to himself and to his teammates, uh, and even to his coaching staff that, that he takes this game uh, uh, seriously because, because of, of his, his people it have, have been playing this game for, for so many centuries. And he, he's going to he's going to he's going to uh, go out there with with heart and hustle and pride on the cross field. My name's Tom Mills, and uh, I'm shaping a piece of hickory that uh, I'd like to make a lacrosse stick out of if all goes well. I'm just trying to make it somewhat even so it'll bend, give an even thickness. And uh, I've got a steaming set up here. We're going to steam the wood for about an hour and try to bend it on that jig there. As a kid, I was always interested in the outdoors and nature and uh, uh, Native American uh, culture and things like that. It was just something that always kind of grabbed me. And when I learned that this was essentially the same stick that was made probably thousands of years ago, I just became uh, fascinated with the game even more. We use hickory wood. It's traditionally what was used for uh, lacrosse stick making. And because it's a, a very tough wood, it responds well to heat bending. When wood gets heated, it becomes more supple and uh, uh, more uh, plastic in the sense that you can bend it and shape it.
Well, it didn't work out 100% uh, as I'd hoped it would. We had a lot of damage to the wood. I intentionally left it thick enough that I, I should have enough material left to make a stick when I, I, I shave away all the, uh, the splintered parts. As you can see, all you need is about an inch this way, and we have in excess of that, so it should be okay. Well, you want a straight tree, straight up and down. You can look at it one way, turn it this way, it's curved. So you want straight. Straight is best. No knots, no limbs for at least eight, nine feet. And you only use the bottom eight feet of a tree. When you get to the next level, there's so many knots and limbs in it that uh, it's no good. The traditional sticks, we use at a certain time in our existence and people still use them today. Typically, these, you know, everything from these sticks were a part of a living thing. These sticks were made from something that was once living, so there's energy and strength to it. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention about the sticks is how they're given to people when they're born. So when a boy in a family is born, they're given uh, a stick. So they have a stick since the day they arrive on this earth. These wood shafts are, 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 are very important, you know. You get a certain feel for it, even though it's not, like not a tree anymore. The living organisms are always here. So there is still energy in wood. And it makes you feel like connection with, with, with earth when you, when you're playing, which is another importance uh, of playing the creator's game. The wood, you go and select from a living tree. It's not the heartwood, it's the sapwood. The living part of the tree is what the stick is made out of. The connection, that living part of the tree, this is a, from a live tree. You harness that energy from that living tree into craft this lacrosse out of that living tree. That energy is transferred to the person who's using it. You respect it for what it is. You give thanks. That was a living tree. Katikwa Ehranaga is um, the name that our, our people have given it, and it means they bump hips. Hunchikwais are, are the players. So I'm an old time Hunchikwais. I've been playing this game for a long time. I would say from 1945 and actively on the field. I played for the Onondaga Nation. It's just uh, part of my life. And uh, this is my, this is my stick. The last stick that I used, I'm a goalkeeper. It's a Benedict stick. Unchikwa'i. And it belongs to the Haudenosaunee. It belongs to the Iroquois. Back in the old days, they settled uh, disputes with the game. Uh, rather than have a war, we'll have a game. I'm doing my best to, uh, to have the, our young people carry on the the game and all of the players. Uh, so I would say that um, we are pleased. The, the Haudenosaunee is very pleased that our game has reached the point that it has and will continue. And uh, 
that will continue. If, if nobody else ever picks up the sticks in the world, Six Nation will play right to the end. We'll be playing no matter what the rest of the world does. It's a pretty deep thing, pretty deep here. It touches everybody on the nation here, everybody. It's kind of, you could say that this game is uh, part, of, part of who we are as a people. In our ceremony, where you thank the Creator for the rain, the sun, the soil that makes the tree grow, you're going way back. It's very spiritual. You're buried with your stick. It's deep. It's heavy. You're going to play in the spirit world with your ancestors. That doesn't end here. And as a stick maker, you know that the ceremony can't be done without a wooden stick. See? So this is why I do it. I do it for our people to carry on this tradition. And when we have a medicine game, uh, our players are instructed the importance of the tree. And it comes from the hickory here, representing all the trees in the world. So that's what we carry into the game. The kind of mysterious spiritual side of this game is it's in the stick itself. And so we're all interested in promoting the game, and uh, we're, we're pleased that you guys make the effort to come out here and, and uh, investigate and, and join us and, and get a glimpse of how deep and strong the Iroquois are. I think that if there was a message that I'm sending out to, to people in the world is to understand that and that all of those people who pick up the uh, plastic stick understand that there's a base, there's a foundation to that, and this is it. <laughs>